Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I wanted to look at fielding the minor nations of the Napoleonic Wars, not necessarily in a practical way, but just more talking and thinking about the minor nations that you know, took part in the war and why you might want to pick to collect one of them over and above one of the major nations. Now, this actually comes from a comment on my video on collect start collecting the Bavarians. Where someone said, so basically what you're saying for the Bavarians is they're the French, but just not quite as good. And to be honest, I found it really difficult to argue with that point. Because, I mean, the guy was spot on. Apologies, I can't remember who it was who made that comment. But I think I might have pinned it at the top of the video. But uh, yes, so the Bavarians, are, they have most of the special rules of the French. They're just not quite as good. So what I wanted to have a look at today is the reasons why you might want to collect some of the minor nations, what the minor nations are, some of the, the problems and the pitfalls that you can have when looking for the minor nations, and then finally, what they can bring to the hobby. So first off, when I say minor nations, then I um, we, I guess we'd better think about who I'm talking about. Now, there's the big six in the Napoleonic Wars, as I see it. There's the British, French, obviously, the Prussians, the Russians, the Austrians, and I include the Spanish in the big six as well. So we're not talking about those nations, we're talking about all the other ones. So we're talking things like Bavaria, as previously mentioned, the Confederation of the Rhine, the states there, the individual ones, Portugal, the Dutch Belgians later on in the war, Italy, the Portuguese, America, if you want to go into that, and the Ottoman Empire, you know my love of those. So those are the nations I'm talking about. When I say minor powers, I'm not necessarily saying that they weren't influential in their own spheres of influence or anything like that. But I'm just saying that when, in terms of Napoleonic armies, these are not the big six. So, you know, you've got the, the Premier League of nations, then the, we're talking about the Championship and the League One teams here. So what are the the problems of collecting these nations? Well, the first and most obvious one is there's going to be a lack of models. Now, that's not to say that you can't find any models out there. Let's take Bavaria as an example. You can get plastic Bavarian infantry these days. You can get uh, metals from Perry's. And you can also find all the cavalry that you need from front rank as well. So Bavarians pretty well covered. An army such as Italy... Well, you can use the models there. You can just use French models, paint them with white coats. There you go. You've got yourself an Italian army. The Portuguese, they're quite well uh, supplied by the Warlord Games and things like that. So there are models out there for these nations. However, they're not necessarily the ones that you can find in your local store. And more importantly, they don't necessarily have the whole breadth of the army. So, for instance, if we look at the Warlord Games and the Portuguese example... You can get the Portuguese infantry from Warlord Games. Brilliant. Uh, you might be able to get some metal catadores. I think you can. But you can't get any cavalry and you can't get any commands. So while it's not the, exactly beyond the wit of man to make your own or convert others, that is a problem. You just can't get the army in a box, as it were. The second big problem is researching their battles, their units, their uniforms, things like that. Now, overall, that's not necessarily too difficult on the uniform front. Look at a nation like, for argument's sake, Berg. I mean, there's you know they didn't exactly have the biggest army in the Napoleonic Wars, but you can find plenty of references for their lances. It's not necessarily the end of the world for uniforms, but things like unit organisation, what they did in battles in particular is quite a difficult one. I found when I'm researching non-British or French units, it's often very difficult to find out what those units were doing in a battle. So anyone who's seen my series on the Russian Guard, that was really hard because I'm looking at, say, Borodino, and everything is from the French perspective. So you really have to scrabble around to try and find those odd references to the Guard here and there and then stitch those together into what's what I hope was a coherent narrative of the battle I, i'll let you decide whether it was or not so sometimes the research is quite difficult as well now on the flip side of that is that some of the minor nations are actually very very well documented particularly the german states now my german's not very good i i can't speak german at all but uh, if i could then there'd be there's actually a surprisingly amount of uh, large amount of good documents out there that can really help you with that 
So while it can be difficult, I don't want to give the impression that yeah, the minor nations are impossible to find, but uh, it can be difficult. And the other thing is as well, I'm just looking over at my bookcase now, and I can see my copy of the Ottoman Army of the Napoleonic Wars from uh, Reason to Republic, and uh, sorry, Reason to Revolution is the uh, the series. Um, and the other problem with these quite specialist books is they can be very expensive as well. You can pick up a copy of the French Cavalry, or which is a phenomenal book. I recommend that you do if you haven't already. Or even something like Swords Around the Throne, relatively cheaply. You can also get them on Kindle as well. I'm going to get loads of people in the comments saying Swords Around the Throne is really expensive now. I picked my copy up for 12 quid, I think. So, um, you know, they are out there. But as with everything else, if it's something that's a bit more specialist, a bit more niche then unfortunately they're going to be a little bit more expensive. One thing that I should say about the figures availability, and I'll, uh, I should have said this before I talked about the, the history and the researching, is there is a company out there, uh, Lucas at Piano Miniatures. He is a friend of the channel, but uh, he's not paying me to say this. In fact, I'm paying him to be able to say this. Well, quite, <laughs> I'm not quite sure that's worked out properly, but that never was much of a businessman. But uh, at Piano Miniatures, he does a superb range of Württemberg. In fact, I'm just uh, on my painting station at the moment. I have some Württemberg Guard de Corps cavalry. And he also does Hesse Darmstadt. And I believe he is doing the Tyrolean, Tyrolese Revolt next. So he's already put up some, um, some examples of the Austrians that he's doing. Bavarians. I'm not. Sure, I'm not sure I've seen any of his Tyrolean uh, militia yet, but uh, I'm sure they'll be out there soon. So yes, there's plenty of. Uh, he's definitely filling a gap in the market, and I would highly recommend that you go and check him out. One of the other plot pluses, I guess, we've sort of gone from the negatives into the pluses now. I suppose one of the other pluses of collecting one of the minor nations as well is that it makes you expand who you're looking at. So for instance, the Perrys. Perrys are. I, obviously absolutely awesome but they have gaps in their ranges so for instance to go back to uh, the piano miniatures example they don't do any Württemberg guard core now i actually did a video on converting your own out of peri plastic craziers but just straight out the box you can't go onto the peri website type in Württemberg guard core and get yourself uh, a unit of them so the plus is if you put that into google then all of a sudden you've got this these whole new manufacturers that you may not have known about. My brother sent me a link yesterday. So my brother's recently got into Bolt Action, and he's got me into Bolt Action as well. I've also got a uh, an American 105 <laughs> on my painting station as well. I'm switching between Guard de Corps and American Artillery. It's all fine. But uh, he sent me a link to Offensive Miniatures yesterday who do... I knew they did a really nice range of World War II. Didn't know they did Napoleonics. So I clicked on that, and I, ooh, let's have a look. And uh, there's some really nice Spanish in there. So we may be having a, um, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? We may be, well be having something in the near future to do with those Spanish. So uh, yes, we'll see. But anyway, so it helps you look at those other fig figure manufacturers out there. Someone's actually challenged me to do a start collecting using the French but without using Perry's Warlord or Victrix. So I think that's going to be a really interesting one. I'm really, really looking forward to doing that one. Another manufacturer that I really like who very, very niche are Black Hussar Miniatures. They do an absolutely gorgeous range of Saxons. Their Saxon Grenadiers are the ones that are photographed in the Clash of Eagles. They've got bear skins on and red jackets. They look a lot like sort of British Kingsguard do today. But uh, no, they're super cool. I really like the uh, Saxon Grenadiers. So yeah, so it, it helps you widen your horizons. And I guess this is uh, something that's a little bit of an assumption, and it's probably wrong to be. I might address this a bit later on, in that the minor nations are a good second army. So you've got into Napoleonics, you're like, right, yep, I've decided what I want to collect. I want to collect British. So I've got my Waterloo starter set. I've got all the extras that I need. I've got the third division, the British army. Happy days. Now I want to try something different. Well, I'm going to collect a Portuguese army because I want to do the peninsula. Or I want to collect a Dutch-Belgian army because I want to do Waterloo. So you end up getting, you know, half a dozen regiments and two units of cavalry and some artillery or something like that. And that's how your second army grows. Now, that's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely fine. That's a way that I would recommend that you, you approach this second army. But this video is more aimed at those people who want to collect 
a minor nation as their first army. And going outside, the, the safety of the main manufacturers can sometimes be a little bit daunting. But the rewards, they are out there. So one of the things that's really cool about collecting one of the minor nations is they are, as you would imagine, quite uncommon. So if you are new to playing Napoleonics or you move to a new area or something like that and you go to a club, the chances are that if you rock up and say, yeah, you know, what army have you got? Oh, yeah, I've got a Portuguese army or I've got the army of the Duchy of Warsaw then it's unlikely that someone else is going to have the same army as you. Now, there's nothing wrong with playing mirror matches. My first ever game of Black Powder was some French-on-French -French action. But it tends to be more interesting if they're not the same army. Which leads on to a second point for many of the minor nations. They actually fought on both sides of the war. So a country such as the, the Confederation of the Rhine, most of those fought for the French and then later on, during the Wars of Liberation, they were, well, as the name suggests, liberated, and they would go on to fight for the Allies. And that's not always the case. The Italians and the Neapolitans, they stayed pretty firm. The Portuguese, they never fought for the French. But, you know, by and large, a lot of the, particularly the German minor states, they did switch their allegiance. Another quite, a, a, what had formerly been a very major power militarily, was Sweden, and under Marshal Bernadotte, they flipped and they fought against the French as well. So with the upcoming 1813 book, I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of that going on. So not only do you have an army that is unlikely that anyone else is going to have, also they can fight against whatever army your opponents do have. So that's another reason why these minor powers, these minor nations, can be a really good idea to collect as your first, and maybe even your only army. So going back to the comment which uh, set off this video, really, what makes these armies different is, and I'm going to use the Bavarians as an example again, are the Bavarians just French but without the cool stuff like Karazias? To an extent, yes. However, I will say that the Bavarians in particular, because I'm using this as an example, they do have their own tricks up their sleeve as well. Now, one of the big things with the Bavarians, of course, is they have rifle-armed troops, and that's also the same with the Württembergers. Napoleon famously didn't like rifles. He felt that they took too long to reload. And, you know, there's, there's probably some truth in that. But the German states in particular, they were big fans of rifles. Remember, they had the, the whole Jaeger hunting tradition that goes back, I mean, century you know, back to William Tell and all that stuff. But obviously, you know, not with rifles that far back. But they're sharp schutzen. They had their rifles. So it, it just adds a nice variety to the army it's 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 a different tool for you to use and it's also something interesting for your opponent as well when they're going up against this you know if you're british to go up against rifles is actually quite a nice different experience now we've briefly mentioned on it before when i talked about the lancers of berg but the app for me anyway the absolute ultimate reason why i think the the minor armies the german states in particular are that they have some absolutely fantastic uniforms. The Portuguese, their uniform's pretty cool, it's nothing special, but I love their flags, for instance, so they look great on the tabletop as well. The Portuguese, for my money, are the best flags of the Napoleonic Wars. That's a, uh, a controversial statement there. But uh, you might, just uh, as, a, as a brief hint to anyone who's uh, 13 and most of the minutes through this video, here's a little hint for you. You might want to maybe uh, bone up on some flags for this year's um, this year's advent calendar competition. Just a bit of a uh, heads up there for you. But anyway, so the Portuguese flags are really really nice. They're, they've got a sort of geometric design with all the different colours. Ah, oh, they're absolutely gorgeous. You've got the uniforms of something like the Chevalier de Berg, a really nice pink uniform, and even something like the the Württemberg, as I mentioned earlier on. You've got the yellow. For the Garde de Corps, you've got the dark blue and white of the infantry, very similar to French. And then you've got the green of the Jaegers. The Saxon Grenadiers, I said they've got their red coats with their bearskins. And they're often quite a fun amalgamation of different nations' uniforms. Britain and France, throughout the wars, they distributed quite a lot of their own domestically produced uniforms to these minor nations. So something like the Italians, as I mentioned, or even something like the Westphalians. They had a very similar uniform to the French in this case. So they really are a converter's dream. Now, another thing as well, speaking of conversions and uniforms, 
is this is not that big in the Napoleonic Wars. I think maybe they tend to be a bit more serious, perhaps. I'm not sure. But um, in Seven Years' War Gamers, there's a lot of what's known as imaginations. So, imaginations. And it's people make up their own countries, usually their own duchies or kingdoms from you know what was the Holy Roman Empire or the Confederation of the Rhine, I guess it would be in Napoleonic terms. So, I think there's the option there to make your own minor power as well make your own kingdom in germany or your own small republic on the spanish portuguese border or a city that's you know just off the uh, lithuanian and russian border or something well it wasn't really a border but you know what i mean so you can create one of these small nations you can kit bash or you can just pet different schemes and do what you want basically old general dan at the moment he's doing an army based on uh, Constantinople, well, actually, I shouldn't, yeah, Constantinople, if it hadn't been captured by the Ottomans. So his his idea, I guess, is that they would have formed their own army and they've taken part in the Napoleonic Wars, particularly in Napoleon's conquest of Egypt, almost as if it were like a new crusade, basically, which I think is a really cool idea, actually. Now, the other positive for, crea- for collecting a minor nation is going to sound like a negative when I first say it, but, uh, but bear with me, I hope I can persuade you that it's not. And that is that you have limited options. So let's take Bavaria again. Now they have uh, Cheval Leger, and they have Light Dragoons, effectively. But they don't have any Karaziers, they don't have Carabineers, they don't have Heavy Dragoons, they don't have any Hussars. So there's a lot of cavalry units there missing there. But that means that you don't get too bogged down in collecting one of everything. Because you are a lot more limited in scoping what the units your army has, it means you can focus on those armies and get that army together a lot quicker and one that you can use on the tabletop. One of the big problems with collecting the French, for argument's sake, is that, you know, a little bit like a magpie. You see something shiny, you grab it. You see something else shiny, grab it. And suddenly you've got 20 different units, but you can't really make an army out of them because you've only got one unit of line infantry and, you know, you've got... 19 units of all the different types of cavalry so that can be a bit of a problem by reducing the army down uh, particularly the bavarians the portuguese again really good for this by reducing them down to a smaller number not only can you collect a much smaller pool of units but it also gives you the capability of collecting all of those units so hesse darmstadt which i mentioned earlier on i'm hoping to do the entire army of hesse darmstadt because Lucas has you know, made it so that's a possibility. So that means that you can have a much more limited project. So you could do your Napoleonic. Friday State Napoleonic isn't your main period. Say you're a World War II gamer. You can go in, you can say, right, I'm going to do this army. It only contains six regiments of infantry and two regiments of cavalry. And that's it. Once you've got them, that's it. You're done. You can move on to the next one. I mentioned earlier on about how you can make, you know, you can often start with, say, a French army add extra units until before you know it you've got yourself a second army or the british was the example i used wasn't it so you start off with the british army you buy some portuguese units and suddenly you've got a portuguese army you can always do it the other way around as well so you can say right well i'm going to collect a portuguese army you collected your divisions worth of portuguese you decide to get some brits so then you uh, you finally got yourself a british army as well now one of the good things about that is it means that you can do away with the boring line infantry and just focus on, well, I want to get the guards to support my Portuguese or I want to get the household cavalry or something like that. You know, because you're going out of your, out of your in inverted commas, army, you can be a lot more free-flowing with the units that you collect out of there. There's not really the, necess- the necessity to feel that you need to collect the core units first. And that's quite nice as well. That gives you... Again, that bit more freedom to collect what you want rather than what you feel you have to. Now, we've gone through quite a few reasons why I think collecting the minor nations are really good. They look awesome on the tabletop. You can usually always get an opponent, and that will usually be a historically accurate opponent. They're great for converting or doing some kit bashing, and they offer you something maybe a little different from the norm so those are the four main reasons that i've covered off so far i've touched on it a few times already and i guess it's part of the first point there 
is their uniforms look amazing. In this video, I've just done a slideshow of the different uniforms for what I would consider to be the minor nations, and some of the units in there are absolutely gorgeous. So, what I would suggest is, if you are getting into Napoleonics, or you know someone who is, and they are interested in one of the minor nations, then absolutely go for it. I'm not saying that that's better than collecting the British or the French or Prussia or whatever. I'm not saying it's worse. That's 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 the key takeaway, is it's not worse than collecting one of the major powers. If someone wants to collect Hesse-Darmstadt, then they should absolutely go large. If they want to collect a Portuguese army, absolutely, that's fantastic. If they want to collect a Swedish army, then they're on their own for research because it's the most complicated thing I've ever looked. I thought the Ottomans were hard, but blimey Charlie, they've got nothing on the Swedes. So absolutely, then they should go for it. I've talked before about how in Black Powder, the, the basic rules are rice pudding and the army special rules are the jam that you put into your rice pudding. If I'm going to continue with that analogy, I'm going to say that the, the British and the French and all that stuff, that is the rice that goes in the rice pudding. Whereas the minor nations are the fruit that gives that rice pudding its flavour. I don't know if that makes any sense. It kind of makes sense to me. Yes. <laughs> I don't even like rice pudding. I don't know why I keep going with this analogy. But I hope that you know, this video has maybe given you some thoughts about, you know what, I'm not going to paint that 15th unit of French infantry. Or, you know, I've, I'm being, feeling a bit burned out having painted like 10,000 Landveer infantrymen. I want to try something different. Well, that's where the minor nations come in. That's where you can just add one unit, swap it into your army. The thing is with the black powder rules, you can even just sw just swap them in and out. So, for instance, you say, right, I've got a French brigade here. It's got two regiments of French infantry, of three battalions each. Well, you know what? One of those battalions I'm going to paint in this colour, and I'm going to use Wurttembergers, but they're just going to count as French infantry. That's one of the great things about black powder is it is that flexible. Well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Now, just a quick trailer-ish. Now, this Wednesday, just keep an eye out on the feed. So I'll either be putting up a YouTube post, probably mid to late afternoon-ish. I am planning on starting the live streams again. I'm really, really excited about this project. I've, I've had it on the back burner for a while. Unfortunately, the times and timings and things like that haven't quite worked out yet. But... I'm hoping that we can fight the Battle of Waterloo on the live stream. More on that on Wednesday. They start at 6 o'clock. Um, well, actually, 6 o'clock British summer time. The clocks go back next Sunday. So uh, it'll be 6 o'clock GMT plus 1. And I hope you can join us. As I say, we're going to be fighting the Battle of Waterloo. I will post an update on Wednesday, though, because it very much depends on what's happening at work. I'm not 100% sure yet. But thank you very much for watching. I hope to see some pictures arriving on Facebook or in my inbox of some of those minor powers, those smaller nations. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.